Hello everyone, it's your casual gamer Meep here, and welcome back to the channel. This Tuesday, patch 5.1.0 has dropped, and with it, a lot of changes have come to Dead by Daylight, including some that weren't originally a part of the PTB necessarily. I'm going to start with the Trickster, as this was more or less his patch, because it centers around a lot of his changes more or less. Starting with his power showstopper, the number of knives it takes to damage and down survivors has been reduced from 8 to 6. Additionally, the delay it takes before the laceration meter starts going down has also been reduced from 20 seconds to 10 seconds. The rate at which the meter decays has also been reduced to where a full meter will now deplete itself in 15 seconds once the decay process has begun, but if you're running it'll take 5 more seconds, so default 20 seconds if you're being chased. Overall though, these feel like good changes, as it'll take fewer knives for the trickster to down you, so he's going to be more lethal. But he'll have to use more thoughtfulness in how he does it because he'll lose progress towards damaging you if the chase drags on too much. I think this will encourage more thoughtfulness in how you use his knives overall in terms of effectiveness and efficiency. Something that wasn't in the PTB but has changed that affects Showstopper is his default number of blades. The Trickster used to start the match and was allowed to carry up to 60 blades at a time. However, now he starts and carries only 44 blades at any given point by default. I think this change was so he couldn't spam knives over and over before running out or damaging you. I can see why it was changed for balancing reasons, but 44 is such a strange number. If they made it 40 or even 45, I think it would be more of a commonly used numerical value because we have 40 second cooldowns and some perks have 45 seconds in their name, or rather in their effect more or less. So 44 is just a really strange value that they could have given him. Since his default number of blades were changed, his add-ons Trick Pouch and also Bloody Bower, which were not changed in the PTB, have also been slightly altered on live servers now. Trick Pouch used to increase the maximum number of knives you could have at any given time by 10, but Boa also had the same effect but was for 15 blades. Both of these add-ons have been reduced to both 4 and 8 blades respectively. If you use both of these blades, you could have up to 85 blades prior to this patch. Now the max you can have is up to 58 blades at a time. The rest of his add-ons that were changed in the PTB have also come to live servers with no additional changes to them. These include both of his ultra rare add-ons including Iridescent Photocard and Death the Rose compilation, as well as his Melodious Murder, The Fist Spin Soda, Lucky Blade, and The Waiting For You Watch. The changes to his perks both No Way Out and Hex Crowd Control have also come to live servers with no additional changes. His special ability main event has been tweaked a little bit number-wise. The amount of knives it takes for you to fill up the power bar to activate main event has been increased from 20 successful blade hits to 30. Additionally though, the window to activate main event has also been increased from 10 seconds to 30 seconds, which is a nice change overall. While it may take longer to build up main event, with its increased window to activate it, I'm sure it'll open up more opportunities in order to effectively use it. I still don't think though that he should necessarily have a window to use it, because other killers who have power bars that they need to build up over time such as Myers' Evil Within, Doctor Static Blast, or even the Blight's Rush. They don't have a time frame window restraint to them. The player can choose when to use their powers respectively, when they see fit, and I think the Trickster should also follow this established pattern with the ability to use his power, but that's beyond my control, so we'll see. Other changes relating to perks include Strider, Franklin's Demise, and even Blood Warden. Strider and all other Injured Grunts of Pain increasing add-ons will no longer affect Injured Survivors who run the perk Iron Will, because instead of adding on the percentage value of Strider, it now multiplies the effect. So if a survivor has 0 Grunts of Pain with Iron Will, 25% or even 50% times 0 will still be 0. For all survivors who are not running Iron Will, they will no longer be able to hear their increased volume from Strider or the various other add-ons that affect Injured Grunts of Pain. I still think though this is an indirect nerf to Spirit because out of all the killers on the roster, Spirit is the only one you think of who runs the perk Strider. Moving on to Franklin's Demise, which causes you to drop your items for basic attacks, and items dropped from Franklin's Demise lose their charges over time to where they get zero, is also getting a small indirect buff to it as well. With this patch, keys which are out of charges will no longer be able to open the hatch anymore. I think though the key change is a fair one because you can't use any other item if it's out of charges so I think this is more in line with how item usage should be so overall it's a fair good change. If you've come across Blood Warden in the previous month or so, you may have not known it was there until you were on the verge of escaping. Prior to this patch you had to be right next to the exit point before the entity spikes appeared in order to block you from escaping. Apparently this was an unwanted bug so it's been patched up now. So now you can see the entity spikes from much further away like you previously could. 
It's a small but noticeable change that I think you should be aware of because I have recently encountered it. In other news, the Raccoon City Police Department map offering has also been re-enabled. You can now use it to go to the map and learn and explore and get the achievement for getting the generator done in the main hallway. If you do choose to use the map offering intentionally, I recommend bringing either Small Game, Detective Sunge, or Counter Force so you can find totems and learn their spawn locations on the map. I also recommend bringing either Bond or Visionary to find either your teammates, see what they're up to and doing, and also find generators on the map in order to sort of learn how to navigate to find them more or less. Even though the police department might not be the most functionally laid out map, I think the more we explore and get to know the layout, we'll grow to somewhat like it and be comfortable with it like how we've come with Midwitch, more or less. Some other noticeable changes that you'll see include the visual updates to a lot of the characters, including Dwight, Meg, Claudette, Nia, Lori, Ace, Fengmin, David, Quentin, and Detective Tab. So practically the first half of, of all the survivors, really. With the update, cosmetics and various textures have also been affected as well, including the original survivor's legacy cosmetics, as well as the prestige bloody cosmetics, more or less. I think everyone will agree, though, however, that Quentin had the biggest glow up out of all of them, being considered the former Goblin of Dead by Daylight, so now he's no longer under that category, more or less, which I think is good for him. Love for Quentin. The last major change I wanted to bring up for this patch is basically the stun validation that's also been added. Basically, whenever a killer swings through a pallet as it's being dropped, before the patch you could get the hit and then get stunned after the fact. But now with this, it's basically to where if a survivor drops the pallet right as you're going for the swing and to hit them, the server will reject your hit. So from a killer's perspective, you'll still get stunned by the pallet like normal, but you will also hear the sound of a survivor being hit. But the survivor will actually not be taking any damage or going into the dying state. And to show it on the left side with the survivor icons on the left side, you won't notice that health change state either way. It's otherwise. I've had this happen a few times already, and it takes a second to more or less figure out what happened. But basically, you hear the survivor taking a hit, but they don't actually take the hit, more or less. I think overall this is a good change to generate more consistent results in questionable moments on either side, which is always a good thing, more or less. There's also been a lot of minor bug fixes and issue fixes that they've done to increase the optimization of the game, which I think is good for its overall health in the end. With that being said, I hope you learned something new, and if you did, consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content. I am Meat Less Than 3, and remember the 3 Gs. Good luck, good games, and goodbye for now. I'll see you next time.